my road to producing started with Pursuit of Happiness. Ten years later, it's still, if not Kid Cudi's most popular, it's one of his most popular songs. He just can't get on a stage unless he performs Pursuit of Happiness, like the crowd will riot. <laughs> so it's cool to be part of something that has like longevity like that. I'm on the pursuit of happiness and I know everything is shining on They had made Pursuit of Happiness. I had been in touch with Cuddy a little bit. I'm not sure how he got turned on to Rabbit's Hat in, in the beginning. He worked at like a clothing store. At that time, like nobody had heard of him. He was just like this dude on MySpace. I think we had just done like a long tour in Europe and came home and like they were just like, oh, like you gotta like play beats for Cuddy tomorrow. This is my first time really like playing beats for like a real rapper that's gonna have a record out. So I was like, oh do something quick so he's like literally in a car on his way over and I'm like feeling around the keyboard and just like I had a sound that I had created on on that keyboard and I was like well maybe I can do something with this and just like basically as fast as possible just like laid that down and then like the doorbell rings I'm like all right <laughs> instantly he heard that beat and he was like oh yeah like I was just like messing around I didn't really know like that I was on to something yet but he he had the ear for it first sound that I started with was that keyboard sound. That's a Nord Wave keyboard, which is one of the worst keyboards I've ever bought, but that did have that one sound. It's basically a, an organ tone that's being run through a formant filter. The second thing I did was I added some chords that just totally follows the melody. Um, so I'll play that. two pianos, playing really simple chords, I think basically using like the melody as root notes and just filling it out with some like high sparkly piano. There's like three kick drums here. There's a filtered version of the kick that happens during the verses, I guess. There's a couple snares. I think there's two or three snares. There's a bunch of other like white noise, sort of like little fills. That's just like playing with the cutoff knob on the filter. And then there's all these. So that's literally just like sitting there with the Moon Voyager. And then there's some weird stuff in here. There's like this, this little that's like from an Indian, recording of an Indian like hand drum. And then there's like this other really weird thing. It basically sounds like white noise, but it's, it's a recording of a radiator steaming. If you take like the kick and snare out, the, the beat is actually really pretty weird. Then I took all of that and I threw it through a filter, and that's the beat for the verse. There's guitars in the verse that are super simple. And there's a harmony. So we put it all together, it starts to sound like something. There's a bass guitar. This is the solo that Mike did when we were when we went into the studio with Cuddy. He did this. At the very end, we brought in these, some more keyboards. It's like four layers of a similar idea.
Cuddy did like lower octaves of his voice on the chorus that I always thought was cool. But there's like six layers of him on the chorus. I'm on the pursuit of happiness and I know everything that's shine ain't always gonna be gold. Hey, I'll be fine once I get it. I'll be good. I'm on the pursuit of happiness and I know everything that's sh I always like those low octaves. So this is what it sounds like with everything. It's one of those things where it, it happened so fast that I didn't have time to like over polish it or anything. It stays true to like this kind of very simple, straightforward beat. And I think it suits what Kid Cudi ended up doing with it. The music is so easy to relate to that it all kind of fits together. If I had spent a week on it or something, I probably would have made it too complicated and it wouldn't have resonated that same way. Cuddy's become this like real mythical character for like, I think people of a certain age because he was just like speaking frankly on his tracks in a way that nobody was used to hearing rappers speak. You know, if you mention Kid Cuddy to certain people, they're just like, oh, that's the guy. Like, I've heard so many people like say like, oh, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Kid Cuddy. It's, it's pretty amazing that just being frank and honest with people like turned into this like super solid connection. It's very lasting, obviously. <laughs> like day and night was on the radio at that point and stuff, and I was like, I kind of wish we made like a like a real hit like day and night or something. But then it turns out like this ends up being like it has like such a crazy life.